We're here with Chris Bretherton, who is a professor in the University of Washington Departments of Atmospheric Science and Applied Mathematics and a leading expert in boundary layer cloudiness. He is the 2012 recipient of the prestigious Joel G. Charney Award for fundamental contributions to our understanding of atmospheric moist convection, particularly the discovery of mechanisms governing the transition from stratocumulus to shallow cumulus convection. Congratulations. Thank you. Tell us a little about your research accomplishments and how they relate to ongoing challenges with atmospheric convection in the lower atmosphere. M much of my research has been motivated by the problems that climate models have with simulating clouds. Uh, turbulence is one of the main reasons that climate models have problems simulating clouds because uh, turbulence is not resolved by a typical climate model. It's a uh, the grid of a climate model is 100 or 200 kilometers, and turbulence is much smaller than that. And many clouds have a lot to do with turbulence, uh, in particular clouds in the atmospheric boundary layer, which cover large amounts of the uh, ocean surface. So uh, that really motivated me was to get rid of a systematic error in climate models that was uh, very pervasive 15 or 20 years ago, uh, which was that uh, climate models didn't actually simulate stratocumulus clouds uh, in the subtropics very well. And this was in fact thought to be one of the main reasons that climate models developed uh, sea surface temperature biases uh, in, the, in these regions off the west coast of the continent. So uh, since that time, the work that I and many colleagues have been involved in has actually really um, greatly improved this situation such that most climate models now do quite a credible job with simulating uh, the distribution of cloudiness in the, uh, in the tropics. So now we've moved on. Uh, now we're interested a lot in uh, how uh, these clouds might change uh, as we have global warming. So the problem of cloud feedbacks on climate, uh, which is a new frontier and one that models continue to disagree on a lot. I'm working quite actively on that problem right now, as are many other people. and. It would be great if we could have the same amount of progress on that problem in the next 10 years as we made on the problem of where clouds, where boundary layer clouds actually form, uh, the problem that we've been dealing with for the past decade or two. I see. Well, that actually leads me into my next question. Uh, as a leader in the development of cloud representations in many of the world's cutting edge forecast models, what has you most excited in this area for the future? Yeah, well, again, I, I personally am always excited by the problems of what models can't do because really if we're going to try and use climate models to uh, help inform, uh, our, uh, um, inform our predictions about global warming and, uh, and to help understand climate, uh, it's the things that they can't do that are the guides to how we can do that better. And, uh, so, uh, as I mentioned, one thing that climate models are having a tough time doing is agreeing on, uh, on cloud feedbacks. In particular, the, uh, most climate models uh, suggest that there will be positive cloud feedbacks in a future climate, meaning especially that low clouds will tend to melt away uh, in, in a warmer climate. But the degree to which this happens varies enormously between climate models, and this is in fact one of the main reasons that climate models uh, diverge a lot in how much warming they predict, for instance, with a doubling of carbon dioxide. So, so that's, the, that's one problem that I think is very interesting. Uh, another one is, is that of cloud aerosol interaction, uh, which is uh, which is another very big uncertainty in climate models, and uh, one that there have been a lot and field experiments uh, aimed at uh, better understanding. Very good. Well, along your uh, uh, quite lengthy career journey, uh, what, if anything, might you do differently if you had the opportunity? Well, it's difficult to say. I think uh, any, any career involves a lot of arbitrary choices. <laughs> um, I've always known I wanted to be a scientist. Um, I had a strong family tradition. My, my father, in fact, won the first Jules Charney Award. Uh, and, uh, and that I have the same skill set, and that's in some ways steered me into some of the same areas. Um, however, my interests are a lot broader than atmospheric turbulence and clouds and climate. For instance, I've always been a closet geologist or geology buff, and uh, 
and uh, I like earth sciences generally. I, I worked on a, a glacier uh, one summer um, when I was uh, graduating from college from Caltech, and that was a lot of fun. I was out there for two months uh, drilling uh, holes with a hot water drill and ice and then trying to interpret the results in terms of the glacier flow. I could have just as well have done that. Uh, I think there are lots of things, and I think, uh, to my mind, uh, you should never look back and ask yourself, well, what could I have done differently? Of course, you could have had I or anyone else. Uh, I could have had a, a very different career in a different area, but I think it would have been fun anyhow. When you first learned you were going to receive the Jewel G. Charney Award, uh, especially given the family history with it, what was your reaction? Um, I was very surprised. I, I, being at the University of Washington, which is uh, among the country's uh, leading atmospheric science departments, I obviously have many colleagues who I look up to, and uh, and uh, I think some of whom uh, could just as well be sitting here as as I am. And uh, and so I was very pleasantly surprised. I think uh, I think it's nice recognition, but I think I also feel like um, this. Uh, together with some of the other awards this year, are also recognizing the importance of a particular branch of atmospheric science, namely uh, that of small-scale processes of, uh, of turbulence, of moist convection, of clouds. And you look across several of this year's winners and you'll see that theme. And uh, so I regard it as recognition as much for what are the important problems right now in that in atmospheric science and climate as much as perhaps uh, just individual recognition of an individual career. Congratulations again and thank you for taking the time to speak with us. Okay, thanks.